some ingredients are automatic special occasions. I mean, when you spend 20 bucks on a pair of steaks, you're going to want to enjoy yourself. So here's everything you need to maximize your return on investment. To pan roast a pair of filet mignons and then craft a creamy red wine sauce. Think two steaks, one bottle. When you're cooking filet mignon steaks, step one is always some kind of searing heat. It's a good idea to start with oil because oil protects the butter. It helps insulate it from the direct heat of the pan. Lots of salt and pepper. As expensive as that meat may be, it's actually quite bland. And the reason it's so bland is because it's tender, which makes it easy to cook. And in our sort of beef pricing system, we value ease over flavor. That's why stewing meat is so inexpensive, but the tender stuff is always expensive. Basically, you want to keep the heat level at just enough to hear the sear, but not so much that you're burning the meat or burning the butter, because there are actually two things going on here. We're cooking and searing the beef, but we're also getting ready to make the sauce. We don't want any burn flavors when we get there. Now, I have to admit, searing's nice and building a red wine sauce is nice, but what really matters is whether the steak is cooked correctly. So how do you know when the steak is done? Well, there's a couple of ways. You can do what a chef does, poke it, feel it, and just know with 20 years experience under your belt whether it's cooked correctly or not. Or think of it this way. You've just spent 20 bucks on a pair of steaks. Why not spend a few more dollars on certainty? I like medium rare, so I know that if I see 130 to 135, that steak is going to be exactly where I like it to be. Those look beautiful, and the pan looks pretty good too. That's actually your sauce waiting to happen, and to encourage it along the way, how about a full bottle of red wine? Actually, how about a half bottle for the sauce and half a bottle for the cook, and whoever you happen to be sharing dinner with? Because really, look, if you don't like the flavor of the wine in the glass, you really shouldn't be cooking with it. There's just something decadent about pouring that much wine into a pan. And now it's time to make the sauce. So forget patience. Turn the heat all the way up, right to 11. Let's make a sauce. This is called a reduction. The wine's flavors are being concentrated. The sauce flavors in the pan are being absorbed. And the wine is transforming from a liquid to a syrup. And when it gets there, when it's noticeably thickened, it's time for a couple tablespoons of cream. Give it a good swirl until the cream and the wine combine and you get this beautiful, silky, smooth sauce. But I'm not done yet. This is one of my favorite cheeses, a soft French cream cheese. It's a great finishing ingredient for a sauce like this. Then turn off the heat, it's time to eat. And since we eat with our eyes first, a fresh herb garnish is always a good idea. A sprig of oregano doesn't add much flavor, but it sure does look great. Mmm, big and beefy. And that's just the flavor of the sauce. When you make a sauce that way, there's no question about what wine to match with it.